Hey friends, welcome to another Christmas creation from Bubbly Balloon Co. Today we're doing a red and white Christmas wonderland in my house. I'm so excited. I've decorated my whole living space to match this, my tree, all my decor. Everything else is red and white in this space, so I can't wait to bring this to life with you guys. Now the garland itself is gonna be rather simple. We're using white from Tough Decks in five, 11, 17, and 24 inches. And then we're using ruby red from Qualitex in five and 11, and red from Qualitex in 16 inch. I'm hoping that mixing those reds is gonna turn out okay, but I think it will. And then what I'm really excited about is adding in all of these picks, like these floral picks or for trees or whatever, in various red and white designs that are just so cute. I think it's really gonna bring this to life. Now some of these are pretty heavy, so we're gonna have to make sure we have a lot of different attachment points and that it can actually sustain that additional weight. And we're gonna be adding in a lot of red and white different foils. So let's dive right in. I'm gonna go ahead and dump out all of the latex balloons I think I'm gonna need. We're going for about 12, maybe 15 feet in length today. So not nothing crazy huge here. And like I said, we are keeping it rather simple. So I'm just gonna be creating um, basically pairs, put them together to make some quads. And then I will probably be assembling quads, maybe a few clusters to create the garland itself. Let's do it. Now I'm primarily gonna be using the 11 and 16 inch or the 11 and 17 inch here, but every so often I will definitely be throwing in like a five inch or two along the way, maybe a 24 here to really kind of fill this out, give it some really nice dimension and some like different sizes and you know, shapes along the way. You guys know what's coming next. We're gonna take two balloons of any color. I'm mixing a red and a white here. These are both 11 inches, but I will be using a lot of those 16s and 17s as well, as well as occasional fives, maybe a 24, okay? I'm gonna inflate these at the same time to slightly different sizes and tie them together. All right, that's my first pair. We'll make another. And this is our first quad. Now two of the biggest tips I can give you to take this from looking like a, like a DIY amateur level to more of a professional creation is gonna be to inflate your balloons to very different sizes along the way. Like in every cluster and every quad that you're working with, you don't want your reds or your whites to be the same size as one another. You wanna keep those all like pretty staggered, okay? And then the second thing is gonna be to press on them, whether on the table, on your body, on your hands, and give them that round bubbly shape, all right? So just don't be afraid to put a little bit of pressure. You can let a little bit of air out if you need to but making those round is gonna make all the difference, okay? All right, I'm gonna keep making quads here. Now you can keep inflating until all your quads or clusters are made and then you can assemble at the end. For me, I'm a little bit out of space here. My tabletop is covered in these different quads. So I'm gonna assemble what I've got made so far and then from there I'll be able to gauge how much more I need. So all I'm gonna be doing is using one of these 260 balloons, okay? Any old 260, I'm using the color white from the brand Sempertux, all right? And I'm going to go ahead and tie it around the midsection here of one of these quads. And I will double knot it just because I want that real security. I don't want to be worried about it untying, you know, once my garland's up. Okay, then I'll take another, another quad here, pretty much any kind. If you have any sort of pattern or design in mind, you know, you can go large to small, small to large, small to large. You can mix and match. Um, I'm pretty much mixing and matching here. So I'm just gonna grab another one. So what I'm doing is putting the centers of these two quads close together, taking my 260 and wrapping it around a balloon in the new quad. And then there you go, we have this cute section all started. Okay, so I'm gonna grab another one here. Let's take this cutie patootie. In terms of style and design here, the only thing I'm really paying attention to at this point is staggering my larger balloon. So any 16s or 24s, I wanna make sure that it's not just, you know, all the large ones and a whole section are red. I wanna make sure it's alternating or close to it. I'm okay with it looking kind of random. I like the more organic look rather than the super structured red, white, red, white. 
but I do want to make sure that it's not all red and then all white. Does that make sense? So I'm going to put the center here pretty close together. Okay, grab my 260 and then wrap it around a balloon in that new quad. All right, and of course, if we need to adjust, all you're going to have to do is twist and you can reshape as you want. Okay, this is what we've made so far. It's about a four to five foot section. So I basically want to do about three times as much in total. So I'm going to keep building quads. Now you can also create your garland in sections and this is particularly helpful when you are traveling with the garland, you know, you're creating it in one place, you're installing it in another and the whole thing all put together won't fit in your vehicle. Um, sections can be very helpful. So I'm gonna go ahead and make the bottom portion of this garland in its own section and then we'll connect to the two. So I'm gonna want the largest piece near or at the bottom. So that's what I'm gonna start with. Again, taking this 260, Wrapping it around the center here, and I'm just gonna double knot that for extra security, all right? Then we'll take another quad here. I'm just gonna go for an average one. Okay, we'll get some nice dimension going there. Put the two centers close together and wrap. Now you guys might be able to tell I'm getting pretty dusty and dirty over here. A lot of times latex balloons do have like a powder or a dust like coat or finish. And when you use your body to make a garland as I am very prone to do, it can definitely transfer on. So that's why I personally never dress up on event days. I wear like a set of specific like leggings and shirts that can handle whatever gets thrown at it that day. So you can obviously wear whatever feels right to you, but that's just my two cents on it because I always leave like sweaty and just covered in dust. So I recommend wearing something you don't mind getting a little messy. All right, let's keep building out here. So we're going to add another section on here, get those centers nice and close together, pull that 260 up and wrap. All right. Now you see how much bigger that is for the base? Yes. We like a big bulky base, don't we? Okay, so at this point, we've got the base section of the garland, we've got the mid section of the garland. So now we're gonna work on something just a little bit smaller for the top portion of it, just so there's a little bit of taper there. Um, I don't think I want it super big and bulky the whole way down. So let's create that. Okay, we've got this little baby section here for the very tip, the top of the garland, okay? So we've got three sections we're gonna go ahead and bring over to the installation site and I will show you what to do when you're working in sections, how to connect them. But before we do that, let's go ahead and inflate all the foils we're gonna wanna use on this one. Now I got some really cute, what was supposed to be peppermint candies, but all the ones I could find on Amazon turned out to be blue and red, not white at all. So I'm gonna inflate one or two, but I don't think I'll end up using it because I really want red and white for this creation. But in the off chance it looks good, I'll inflate a couple. I really wanted this to be cute, you guys, but that is very definitely not white. We'll see how it looks on the garland in the end and decide whether or not to use it. Now I've got white starburst balloons in 40 inches and 27 and a half inches. So we can have a couple different sizes there. I love that. By the way, if you want an in-depth tutorial on how to create one of these 3D foil starbursts, I do have a video on it that I will link up here for y'all. And last 
lastly, I've got these cute red foil stars that'll add just a little extra pop to the garland. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and install this in sections. Now, another time you might wanna use this kind of section method is when you're adding in a lot of stems, florals, you're adding in things that are heavy and gonna add weight to it. So if I were to do just one garland all the way down here, and then I was gonna add in a bunch of these picks and stems that are actually pretty, you know, they're pretty heavy. Um, if it starts to kind of like pull down in one area, that could kind of affect the entire thing. And Lord knows I've had it happen before where the whole thing has fallen down. So. Um, one method to kind of help with that is to put it in sections. So if I'm breaking this down into three parts, each section, you know, might have a couple different attachment points, and then it's only going to be responsible for the weight of the few picks in that section. And it's just a lot more stable, a lot more steady, and I have better peace of mind with it. Okay, so that's just another example of a time you might want to use sections. If you've got another one I didn't mention, let me know in the comments down below. So we're going with one of my favorite methods for hanging today when I'm working with command hooks, which is to use two 60s, tie one end onto the hook, leave some slack hanging, and then when I bring my garland up, we're gonna wrap this end through a bunch of different balloons. So I'm gonna go ahead and tie two 60s to all of these command hooks here. Okay, now that our 260s are attached to these command hooks, I'm gonna go ahead and start hanging this garland section by section. Now, of course, we're gonna wanna create a seamless look throughout here, but I'm gonna start with this base section, get it nice and secure with those three different attachment points I have right there, and we'll go on to the next section. All right, now that first section is pretty secure. I'm gonna go ahead and take this next one and do the same thing. Now you can see I've still got a 260 left here, so I'm gonna use this to tie it into this base section and make it look seamless, okay? All right, then we'll take a 260 from the command hook here. Make sure that's nice and secure. All right, now each of these first two sections are attached with three different attachment points. So they're gonna be pretty secure when it comes time to add in like picks or stems, anything like that. Those are pretty secure. Even though these are lightweight command hooks, I feel pretty good about it, so. All right, and our final piece here, you know what we're gonna do. it's time to start adding all those foils to really make it pop and we will finish it off with some of those glorious stems and picks now as usual I want to start with some of my biggest pieces my focal pieces here so I'm gonna take a 260 tie it through the center of the star double knot it okay and then I'm gonna figure out placement and tie it in I think that's kind of perfect we'll do the same with my 27 and a half inch star here Sadly, the rest of my large foils are not gonna work with this creation. Those large candy canes, none of them are holding their air very well. They all look kind of deflated and crappy. Um, those cute peppermints, they turn out to be blue and red, not white and red. And I'm not totally sold on those red star foils. So what I wanna do is switch gears. I'm gonna put in some of these um, picks, some of these stems, see how that brings it to life. And if I wanna add in anything else, I can. Now, one of the biggest tips I can give you when you are to the stage where you're putting the final touches on, you're shaping your garland, you're adding in those details, is to look at your design through a camera throughout the process. It could be on your cell phone or on like a real camera, but you're gonna see things through that lens that you didn't see with your eye. She looks in the end. You can see we took a very simple red and white 12 foot garland and really spruced it up with the addition of these amazing picks and stems I got at Michael's, Hobby Lobby, places like that. 
Thanks so much for watching today. Merry Christmas to you all. I'll see you in the next video.